move your feet. Every step in the in the army is I'm called my time. Every move I make. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Every step I make. Every step I make. Every move I take. I'm walking. I'm walking in victory. In the army is called my time. Every step I Walking in me, to march in place. Come on. I'm walking. I'm walking in victory. Oh, every step I make. Walking in victory. Every move I take. Walking in victory. I'm walking. I'm walking in victory. Come on, pick your feet up. Every step I make. I'm walking in victory.
Can you say praise the Lord? Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody and say, I got victory by the hands of the Almighty. Oh, y'all not saying it like you really mean it right now. Say it by the hands of the Almighty. By the hands. Walking in victory. Hallelujah. I've been delivered. Oh, wait a minute now. The word of the Lord says that you come by the word of your testimony. Come on. I heard the preacher say this morning, you can't just think praise. You overcome by the word of your testimony. You spread your testimony with his sop. Did you hear me? Come on. You just didn't spread the blood on the doorpost any kind of way. Come on. When the blood was supplied to the doorpost, they, the Lord had given them specific instructions that I want you to do it with hyssop. Amen. Hyssop was a plant that grew. And it grew all over the Middle East. But he didn't, he didn't want, check this out, he didn't want the blood applied with cotton. He didn't want it sprayed with plastic bottles. They didn't have them, of course. He didn't want the blood applied with uh, uh, your rag. He didn't want to apply with a paintbrush. Come on. He wanted to be applied with hyssop. Hyssop. Now what hyssop means, it's testimony when you look up the meaning of the word. And so by the hands of the Almighty, now listen, you're gonna have to learn how to testify behind them masks. Hello somebody. On. Behind them masks and behind whatever's going on. You're going to have to learn how to testify when you go to the grocery store, masked or unmasked, because can't no germ save you. I mean, can't no germ get to you unless God allow it. Didn't say you was a sinner, but can't nothing get to you unless God allow it. And the whole world is going to learn that you either got faith and power in the blood or you in trouble. And so I want to explain to you that we're not called to religion Amen. to think that I'll, I'm, I'm okay uh, another way. Praise the Lord. We have to learn how to, to apply the blood. Now, when we use that, that phraseology in Christendom as Christians, do you know it is the weapon the greatest weapon you have against the enemy? Because if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ, God would have done told his place up by now. It don't have anything to do with our goodness here. Can I get an amen? amen. It has nothing to do with what you did, how many hungry folk you fed. Really, those are called good works. It has nothing to do with the fact that you, did, you wasn't really bad. It has everything to do, the reason the Lord don't come is because his son's blood was shed and he's trying to give people time. But we're in a warfare and the way that we fight is we have to fight spiritually. Amen. And, and one of the weapons is that we say what the Lord says about redemption. He says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What we have as we come out, come out of our religious, uh, come out of our religious catacomb, we still have residue of let the preacher tell me how I feel. Yeah. Let the choir sing me into how I feel. But we are in warfare all over the world now. And you gotta, you're going to be by yourself. I hope it never happens to you. But you know, a lot of precious people went home to their reward in a room by themselves. We was blessed to have maybe a nurse or two that's a member of this church to be with one or two, but the bulk of people that passed away in the world, even in the United States, the greatest uh, nation on the face of the earth, they passed away in a room by themselves. You hear me? They passed away. Now, when you flat on your back and there's nobody to help you, nurses can only bring so much medication, 
Doctors can only do so much. But if you ever find yourself not only in the hospital, but in a situation, you need to fight according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. It means that you can't, you have to, you're in a spiritual battle. You're being picked on in the, in the playground whether you want it to or not. You didn't do nothing, but the bully, he see you. You know the ones that always get bullied is the one who seem like they come from a protected family. Come on, I was a kid. Bullying didn't start with y'all youngsters. It was bullies when I was growing up in the parking lot on the street corner. And what they would normally do is they would pick out the kid that looked like his parents cared. Because you could tell by the way he dressed, he or she dressed, and the girl bullies too. Tell by the way they dressed, tell by the way they walked, and you could tell by the way they spoke. You could hear the words coming out of their mouth, and, and their mama had been coaching them while she was cooking to use proper English. Don't say ain't. The word is isn't. <laughs> Don't say can I. Say may I. It was proper English. They didn't let them use Ebonics. Now, in the hood where I, I grew up, if you talk uh, proper like you you had home training, you better know how to fight, too. They better put you in karate class, too, because you're going to have to fight simply because your clothes was clean, simply because your shoes was nice, simply because you walked and, and you didn't have that swagger yet. You know, you the swagger is something we learn. Come on, I'm going to hurry up and get out of here, but y'all going to make me teach about ghettoitis, ghettoism. Hood, whether you're black, white, blue, or green, Amen. you know, what you have to do, all the pretentious stuff you have to do to survive. You can't smile because they'll think you're a patsy, somebody to beat up. You got to act hard all the time. Come on, you're soft as cotton. You know you are. But you got to, you know, you got to be hard. Them girls in the gym will jack you up if you cried because they read a story in the classroom, you know, a teardrop because Jane and Jack lost, you know, fell on, coming down the hill. You know good and well if you were sensitive. And so you practice that because you live in a hard world. Oh, we do. I'm going to get into a word here in a minute. But, you know, I was on my way to church this morning just singing the praises of the Lord in my spirit, just coming down the street, just normal way I come. I seen a man and a woman in the street, you know, on the sidewalk. And the man pushed the woman like you would push a guy in a, on a football field. I mean, both hands just jacked her up in her chest. And so... You know, I did a U-turn. I was going to make a citizen's arrest, you know. No, I was going to say something. I know you're taught, don't get involved. Don't bother people. But I saw a woman being assaulted this morning by a man. I made a U-turn, picked up my cellular, getting ready to call the police. The police pulled right alongside me, and I flagged him down, and I told him, that man hit that woman right there. When I get there, Police tell me he parked there. He began to question them. I'm going somewhere with this. He began to question them. First thing she hollered, he didn't do nothing to me. Mister, you lying. She come across the street. She want to whoop me. He called me every expletive there is but a child of God. He wanted to come whoop me. And they, they put their story together. They seen the popo. They put the story together. And I said to the police, I said, I'm on my way to church. I don't even know these people. Why would I stop, call the police, flag you down, if I hadn't seen a witness what I would consider a crime? I thought I was coming to the aid of a woman, a damsel in distress. If she'd have been my wife, she'd been my sister, been one of y'all, been anybody, somebody need to get involved. Hello, I know when I said that the first thing, y'all better leave people alone, you so and so. You know, no, no, no. See, we in this world, but we're not of this world. It's that same kind of intimidation that the enemy does to you and I. When it comes to things like saying who Jesus is, making an open confession who he is, the enemy intimidates. He pushes us in the chest like, who are you? As that man, he tiring over that woman, just looking at her, you know. Now, instead of when help came, instead of her saying, yes, that's right, he done that to me, she agreed with her abuser. 
when we don't learn how to make the confession, and you don't just make it based upon I'm in trouble. You got to make it like you apply deodorant. You apply deodorant not on top of dirt, but after you clean. Is that right? And you want to make sure you always stay ahead of, of some stuff. You take your medicine if you really have to take it, not after the pain comes. You're supposed to take it before it comes. Till the doctor tell you don't, you don't need it no more or, or whatever to prevent it. The reason we make our confessions, the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, is because we are just like you spray to keep the roaches out, the bugs out. You don't want to wait till they get in. We exterminate the enemy. And a lot of times we haven't practiced the extermination part of getting the enemy to back up off me, Jack. I belong to somebody. See, when you go on the playground and they look and they know your big brother, your big brother is a bruiser. They, you, you got street creds or whatever you want to call it. They don't bother you. The reason the enemy can come in when he want to, because a lot of us won't let him know that Jesus Christ is my elder brother. Amen. And you can't fool with me. You got to tell him in advance because the fact that you got up this morning, he singled you out for such, some type of playground bullying. Now, this here is kind of like the playground. Yeah, we come. We come to learn. We come to fellowship. We come to get hyped about going out there, going home, going to work, getting around our people, getting around people like I was around people who I don't even know who may be hostile. But, see, we don't have to be afraid because we have the blood of Jesus on us. Hello. We don't have to be afraid of diseases. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. We don't have to be. They come. We don't have to be afraid of the common cold. If it come, I'm going to deal with it in Jesus' name. We ain't going to be afraid of the flu. I'm going to deal with it. COVID ain't going to kill me. Amen. That needs to be your testimony. Even if I get the bug, it ain't going to kill me. I had pneumonia once. I didn't die. People get that. You know, the reason we got inoculated back in the 50s when I was born is you had to join school. You had to have a polio shot. You had a yellow card, a vaccination card. You had to have all that before you went to school. Ain't no big deal now about getting the shot. Get the shot and move on. Praise the Lord. And I mean, it ain't the mark of the beast. Whoever telling you that, that ain't the mark of the beast. Come to church. I'll teach you what the mark of the beast is. If that's the mark of the beast, then uh, 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 aspirin is the mark of the beast. Ibuprofen is the mark of the beast. Amen. The world has known pandemics and plagues. The Black Plague from rats killed half of Europe. Amen. They had all kinds of influenzas before they got vaccine, folk get the flu and die. They had the same pan panic spirit on them when folk were dying of the flu. All kinds. Read your history about plagues and pestilence. They have come and they have wiped out hundreds of thousands of people. Can you say amen? amen. But listen. When that was happening at one point in history, it was the Christians who went out in the street and picked up the people who were laying in the streets with the plague of that, of that day because nobody else would receive them. Nobody else would let them come in the house. Nobody would feed them. It was the Christians. Now, how could they do that? We would have called them today foolish and stupid. They knew they was covered by the blood. They didn't have all the negative information that you and I have to ingest every day, all day telling us, praise the Lord, that uh, uh, we ain't going to make it, we're going to die. And I'm gonna, this is no indictment, amen, on what you have to do to feel comfortable about you. But here's what I'm going to say, that if you ain't hollering the name of Jesus at least a hundred times a day, you're going to get picked on. You're going to be beat up. I don't care. You can live in a hospital. You're going to get something. Amen. You can go down to the police station and beg for protection. Something going to get into your mind. Something going to get fear going to grip you because it's a spiritual battle. Come on, clap your hands. It's a spiritual battle. We clap our hands because we letting the devil know that we making a noise for the Lord. That's why we do it. Amen. It ain't got nothing to do with how we feel. It's called a sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of my testimony. Amen. And the ultimate end of the enemy is to keep your mouth shut. To keep your mouth shut because your mouth is the greatest weapon you got. It ain't your feet. It is not your hand. It is your mouth. God is a speaking God. Your God is a speaking God. Your God is a speaking God. And in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and God said. And then he said, let me make man in our image and our likeness, which means whatever he say is what he going to get. What he 
say, whatever he say is what they're going to get. Your God is a speaking God. And the way that you fellowship with him is you speak to him. Hello. He knows your thoughts are far off, but he wants you to speak to him. Amen. Just like somebody in your family wants you to speak to him. Some people you say you love that you hadn't spoke to in a while. Amen. God wants you to speak to him. And you know what religion has done? It's caused us not to speak for God, but feel God. We, I want to feel him. I want the church to feel God. God says, if you had to come and spoke to me, I would have talked to you, talked right back to you. Amen. God is a speaking God. Your God, that's what makes him different than all the other gods and all the other religions. Your God is a speaking God. Hello. That's why he's different than, than uh, Buddhism, statue gods. That's why he's bigger than Allah, who evidently ain't had nothing to say. Amen. Lately. I mean, you name a God, Zen, Baha'i faith, all of the, your God, what makes him different is he's a speaking God. And so you being made in his image and his likeness, to be one of his, what's going to separate you from the world, light from darkness, is you speaking to him, for him, about him. When you come into the congregation of the assembly, it's the locker room where you get hyped up for the fight because the fight ain't in here, children. The fight is on your job. It's in your house. It's in your finances. It's with your kids. It's with your husband. With your spouse. It's with your own personal issues. You only come in here to get the hoorah and get the you can do it. You the greatest running back. You the greatest tight end for Jesus. You the greatest. Amen. If don't nobody tell you, do your assignment, which is to praise the Lord. And you, that's how he, when he, my God comes every Sunday where his people gather. See, the world has heard this lie, but it, don't, it ain't important to go to church. But guess what? It is vitally important to go where people assemble. Let me tell you why. Because if it's the right place at the right time, God's going to download something inside of you to help you meet whatever you face this week. Come on. You are facing devils. Help me, Jesus. You are facing devils. And the Bible says we don't fight as a person. We don't win meal like, you know, you're out of steam. The words of our mouth are weapons. When you say, I love you, that's a weapon against hate. When you say, I, I can, that's a weapon against unbelief. But thinking it is one thing. I know you're the strong, silent types, but God is a spirit. And he's a speaking spirit, the God that we serve. That's why he gave us so much word. He gave us tons of words. But sometimes our greatest battle is to even open it because God is still speaking. Come on. So every time you say a word from God, guess what? You chop the devil down an inch or two. You don't need practice on how to go to church. The greatest practice that all of us need is how to say what God has said in his word. I don't care if it's one scripture. That's the greatest exercise of the day. And that's the only thing that's going to get you through the coming times and the world that we live in. Can you say amen? amen. This would be a time to just say something to the Lord. Say something to the Lord. You can whisper under, under your breath. You ain't never sat next to somebody that you care for and y'all kind of lean over and start whispering. You whisper, they whisper, you whisper. You went to the whole trip to Texas and never said a word? And that's how people do. You, mean, you dressed up and went over to the party and you sat there and never said a word? You watched everybody get their, their party on, but you, you just an observer? That's how we've done the house of the Lord. It's supposed to be a place that catches on fire. Hello. It's supposed to be a place because every one of us is a burning somewhere for the Lord. Amen. 120 people got in a room one day and they began to praise the Lord and then fire hit that room. Oh, I long for the day when everybody can get on one accord and forget about the difference. You don't have to know me. I don't have to know you. 
But if we know Jesus Christ, what's the problem? Amen. When we can all get on one accord and say his name and love his name and worship him. Because when we do, wherever we are, if it's in our living room, if it's in the bedroom, if it's at, on the schoolyard, fire is going to fall. And when fire comes, it burns up all unbelief and all fear. Amen. Do you know your, your, your weapon against fear is to say, the Lord have not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When you say that, that's like telling the bully, my big brother is sitting right there in that Cadillac, and he got a gun. And he take his hands off you, he let you keep your lunch money. It's just that simple. Satan knows the word. And when he knows that you know any ounce of it, amen. When temptation comes, when you say it is written that, uh, you know, that uh, we should obey the Lord. What the word says, we should obey the Lord. I'm not going to be tempted. I'm not going to be fall because there's no temptation that comes from God. It comes from Satan. It comes from something inside of me. So I'm saying right now to this temptation, go away from me in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and the enemy, just like he snuck behind Jesus trying to tempt him, hey man, turn the stones in the bridge. Jump off of the building. You can fly. All that. Jesus said, it is written. And when you do that, when you get discouraged, come on, you have to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Man, you feeling like the lowest worm on the face of the earth. You feeling like a grasshopper. Ain't nobody sending you thumbs up, Texas, how they like you, telling you you're fine and nice, or the fine person and nice person. And, but you just feel the blahs. You look in the mirror. It's a bad hair morning already. You look, you know, you maybe gain a pound or two or some. You're just not comfortable with yourself. You feel bad because some pre-existing condition you got. But you have to learn how to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You just have to say it out of your mouth because the enemy likes to whisper. He like that dude that like to whisper. Man, he's one of the most whispering cats that you'll ever meet. He whisper. I've told you, God help me here now, I've told you, I, you know, because we're in spiritual warfare. From the time we wake our eyes, open our eyes, even, I'm going to tell you, but you're in spiritual warfare when you sleep. That's why the enemy will try to come to you with all kinds of funny dreams. Oh, yeah, he will. Why would he try to come to you and tempt you uh, the, the, to have sex in the bed and ain't nobody in the bed but you? I ain't trying to embarrass you, but, you know, enemy's so bad, he'll come up on you and try to make you think that, the, you know, somebody's in your arms and yada, yada, because you're in spiritual warfare. I'm getting deep here. So there's never a time when you're not in spiritual warfare. Some of you who snore, you this far from, from passing away. You don't get that looked at, get that healed. Get, get a machine or whatever because you stop breathing a whole lot of times during the night. Come on. It's, it's become like a national condition now. All the ladies got hoses hooked up to them. You know, all that. So there ain't no shame in the game. But when you get a real test, it tell you, you, you the whole hour you didn't even sleep. Take you 45 minutes to chill out. Get all the trash that you heard subconsciously unconsciously as you're passing through. I got called so many M's this morning, my God, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. I just praise the Lord. I did. did it just rolled like water like a duck back, you know. He was talking to one of God's children. When he told me it wasn't my business, I said it is my business. I'm making it my business. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And he, he gave us policemen as deacons of the earth to make sure that the trash get taken out or dealt with. So I just praise the Lord. His woman wanted to give me two. Man, I, they don't know. They done put their hands on me. The big angels, y'all see them? They stay with me. Oh, y'all think I'm playing. He, Hebrews chapter 1. He, you know, I'm an heir of salvation, and he has given his angels charge over me and over you too. Two big angels walk with me everywhere I go. You see them, you probably don't see them in the natural, but they there. They there. They walk with me everywhere I go. When you sleep, the enemy try to kill you. Somebody was telling me this morning, amen, about a friend 
it's got blood clots. He passed away. Blood clots in his stomach. Just passed away. In him, if he could, he'd get in your bloodstream because he knows that life starts in the blood. The moment that sperm hit that egg, a red dot appears right in the middle of it. The moment that sperm breaks the crust of that egg and that one sperm to get in there, a red dot appears in there. That's the first sign of life right there. Can't nobody make blood but God. They're making a whole lot of stuff, but they can't make blood yet. Because God's got the secret formula to how you make blood. That's why when you talk about the blood of Jesus, it reminds all the demons in the world that you know the secret. 